Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to talk about peritoneal dialysis and if you are a dialysis nurse, I know you have a lot of questions about PD patients and I know you have anxiety about PD patients. So at the end of this video, I am going to answer your questions and I am going to ease your anxiety about peritoneal dialysis. This video will be especially helpful for acute nurses that don't see peritoneal dialysis patients all the time. This video is going to help with your assessment and help keep your pages at night from your PD patient to a minimum. Before we get too far, I wanted to give a shout out to John in our Dialysis Nursing Facebook group and his hemodialysis nursing training. He was number one in his class and he said that my videos helped him understand hemodialysis concepts. John, way to go. I think that that is so awesome. With that, this is the part of my video where I ask you guys to subscribe and like this video with your likes, comments, subscriptions. My videos go up. On the YouTube algorithm and more people can find my videos and more people can learn about dialysis concepts. I am so thankful to all of you that have already subscribed. I am just above 200 subscribers and I have a goal of reaching 300. All right now to the fun stuff. Let's talk about peritoneal dialysis. As you see here I have a peritoneum, small intestine in pink, I've got the colon in purple, and this green teal thing is the PD catheter. One thing we know about PD patients is that they're not hospitalized as often as hemo patients. And if they're hospitalized, it's not always for something related to dialysis. So let's refresh a little bit. Let's go back into nursing school and let's list a few reasons why our PD patient might be at higher risk for constipation. One, they could be in for a general surgery, a surgery not related to their peritoneal dialysis. They could be in for pain control and taking narcotics that could cause constipation. People in the hospital are not moving around as much. They are not eating as much. And we know that many of our dialysis patients, both hemo and peritoneal dialysis, have to take phosphorus binders and binders bind people up. And I want to explain to you why, as an acute dialysis nurse, your GI assessment should be a root routine part of your assessment of your PD patient. So let's just kind of do a real basic drain and dwell. All right, I've got green dienial. Usually it's clear. I just thought it was easier to see than yellow. And I have about, this is about 1800 mils. So a pretty standard dwell for a PD patient. We know that the fluid goes in and then diffusion and ultrafiltration happen. If you need a refresher on either of those topics, I have a great video that I'll post. I think it will post up over here. Uh, please click a link on that. You'll get a lot of great learning there. So here we have the fluid dwelling in the peritoneum. We know that usually we get more fluid out than we put in. They might get around 300 mil UF. So we'll put another 300 mils in there. Now we're getting pretty full. We have a full stomach. We have no problems getting the fluid in and then it's time to drain. If their bowels are empty, there is more room in here to drain. There's no pockets, there's no pressure. But what happens on the hospitalized patient is they get constipated. And so this is 475 mils. So if our patient's constipated, there's gonna be less room for UF. So as we put fluid in, the fluid will go in nice and easily, but if we're full of stool and we UF more, it's going to drain harder. What's going to happen is we're going to start developing pockets in here. The machine is going to pull, but because you're in a pocket, you're going to get an alarm drain. If the patient is so severely constipated, this catheter can migrate upward. So what happens to the PD machine if you cannot drain the PD fluid? Yeah, you're gonna get low drain alarmed and you know what happens if that machine's alarming your pager is going off so managing their constipation before it gets to this point will help lower drain alarms and you will have decreased pages okay and we all love less pages at night other things that can happen is transmigration of normal bowel flora from the intestine or the colon into the sterile peritoneum so then that's when people develop peritonitis and uh, fluid cultures will show equal 
E. coli. So when you're setting up the PD machine, when you're priming it, when you're unhooking them, when you're doing their PD catheter care, talk to your patient about their bowel movements. Ask them when their bowel movement, last bowel movement was. Ask them if they've been passing gas. Are they getting stool softeners? Was their last bowel movement normal? Have they been getting up and walking around? Because it's a lot easier to talk to them in person and assess that constipation at the bedside than in the middle of the night. Intervene for constipation early. This will save you so many pages at night. If you do this while you are at the bedside with the patient, this pager is not going to go off as often for your PD patients. Most of the nights that I get paged on my PD patients, it's for drain alarms related to constipation. Because if your patient is constipated, they are going to have drain alarms. They are going to have trouble draining their PD fluid. They are going to develop pockets. It's not going to be just kind of free sitting in here. There's going to be pockets in their peritoneum and they're going to have a hard time draining. And you know that if this PD machine is alarming in the patient's room in the middle of the night, you are going to get a page from that floor nurse. And that nurse will not know what to do. They will have a lot of anxiety about this PD machine. So if you are getting those pages at night, if you get that page at night, this, this is what I would do. I would have that nurse turn on the light and I would have, if that patient's with it, they didn't just have open heart surgery earlier that day, I would give that phone to that PD patient because there is nobody that knows their PD treatment better than that PD patient. So give the phone to that PD patient, say, hey, Mr. Smith, can you see your effluent? Can you see your drain bag? What color is it? Does it look clear? Is there fibrin in it? These are all things that the PD nurse teaches these patients to look for. So this is some this is an assessment that they are very familiar with. Then talk to them. You need to differentiate between peritonitis or if they have pockets in their stomach from constipation. So talk to them. When was your last bowel movement? Have you been getting your stool softeners? Do you think you're constipated? Does this happen to you at home? If you move around, does that kind of help with that? drain alarm and if you can't differentiate between a drain alarm from peritonitis or constipation you're probably going to have to come in especially if that patient is telling you oh that fluid is looking very cloudy my stomach is hurting a lot you need to go in assess that patient talk to the nephrologist and probably get a, a fluid sample to rule out peritonitis and let me tell you if you want to impress your nephrologist prevent constipation early. When you go in in the morning and unhook that patient and you talk to them about their bowel habits and you find out that they are at high risk for constipation or that they're constipated, you don't have to page the physician at 6 a.m. to tell them that your PD patient is constipated. When you see them rounding, you see them in the suite, you tell them that this PD patient is constipated, that nephrologist will be so impressed by you and will really help you build a trusting relationship with that nephrologist too. I think that peritoneal dialysis is so cool and the patients that do PD are amazing people. Well, there's definitely a lot to learn about PD and I hope this video helps you understand why you need to assess for constipation on your PD patients. Thank you guys so much for watching. Always remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.